This UI can do everything. Edit your control net images and position them, creating regional masks and prompts, object segmentation and so much more. Hello my friends, this is part 3 of my Invoke tutorial series. If you are new to Invoke, then start by watching these videos first. I will teach you how to generate an amazing image composition like this one here. I'm going to use Cyberrealistic XL for this video, but you can use Flux or any other image model you prefer. The technique itself will be the same. I started by creating this image of a man in a chair because I want to use the position he sits in. And as a big fan of northern mythology, I created this image here that I'm going to use as a base for what the character will sit on. I drag the image of the man onto the canvas and I let go in the upper right corner where it says new control layer. The image then will become semi-transparent and we click up here for layers. Since we want to use it as a post reference, we select post detection open pose. This should be good. I click accept. We go back to the gallery and drag the throne in in the same way. Here select soft edge detection. This will give us some of the details, but not all. If you want more details in your image, then maybe hard edge detection would be the correct choice. Here you can see it at work, but in our use case, the character is sitting in front of the throne and we also want to give the AI some room for its own interpretation. So we say apply here and now we place it in the image. I don't like this detail down here, so we're going to remove it. I do a right click and say disable transparency effect. Always make sure you have the correct layer selected. Now we select the color picker here and pick the black color. Now we're selecting the brush and we are painting over. In Automatic 11.11 or Forge UI this is much more complicated. Because you would have to export the image and then edit it in Photoshop and import it back in. Here you can do this on the fly. When we are finished, we do a right click again and select enable transparency effect. Now we select the bounding box and for a spec ratio I go to 4x3. The idea is to get some of the surroundings for our character in this image. I press shift T in order to scale it and move it around. Moving control net images around is another thing you can't do with automatic or forge. You will see in a moment why we selected this resolution and why we leave so much space for left and right. This should be good. I click accept. Now we select the post detection control layer and do the same thing. This here is an important feature, isolated preview, because if you deactivate it, then you can see what's beneath. This makes combining control net layers much easier. My idea is an image of a succubus on a throne, so we take this good old World of Warcraft succubus model and download it. So here's a quick refresher on how to do this. Click on models here, then scan the folder where you put the files. This is a folder in my case. Your succubus Laura should now appear. And down here where it says installed, there should be a plus icon that you can click. We head back to the canvas and we click here in the concept box and we type succubus to search for it. I remove the current negative prompt and instead I use my default negative prompt that I set up in my first video. For positive prompt I say safe for work, highly detailed image of one female succubus, wings, she is wearing a leather full body outfit, tail sitting on stone throne in hell, wings spread wide out. This is another reason I chose this aspect ratio for the image because I want her to have nice spread out wings. If you want to give a prompt more importance then make a plus or plus plus. It's the equivalent of this in Automatic or Forge. For this YouTube video, just to be sure, I put in not safe for work, naked revealing outfit cleavage. After all this setup, let's test the outcome. These two images are really bad, so we're gonna need to make some changes, probably decrease the control net strength. 
because otherwise it's too focused on generating a throne. We're increasing the post detection control net slightly and, and we're decreasing the succubus Laura here. And now let's try it again. This looks much better in the preview already. I can't show you the second image. It's not safe for work, so I'm going to delete it. We are going to set the strength of the succubus Laura to 0.3. And also I will throw in this demon legion Laura. So we get a little more scary and a little less World of Warcraft. And to top it off, let's put in the detail tweaker Laura as well. This will give us images that are slightly higher in quality. So we add the Demon Legion Laura here and we also add the detail Laura. Let's set the Demon Legion Laura to 0.5 and leave the detail Laura as is. I had to do some renderings off screen because I kept getting not safe for work images. What I did was decrease the Demon Legion Laura further and also editing the prompt a little bit, give more importance to the not safe for work negative prompt and yeah, that worked out. So now our succubus has a really nice wingspan. Don't worry, we are going to fix her face in a moment, but that's not important for now. Since we are doing an image composition, let's remove the character from the background. We select the raster layer and do a right click here and say select object. First I select the leg and the wings, but apparently this is not enough. Let's select the head as well and the other leg. We want to extract the throne as well, so I click a couple of more points here in this image. And yeah, you can see it has a little bit of trouble to extracting the throne from the background. It would have been better if we have rendered our succubus against a simple background. If everything's good, then select apply. This won't be a perfect cutout, so here between her feet you can still see some flames or something, but we are far from finished yet. For the background of our composition I created this hellhound here, so my only prompt was hellhound angry and for negative prompt man, woman, people. So uh, yeah, sometimes simple is better. For the image we want to create, I select 16 by 9 so we can use it as a nice wallpaper. I drag the bounding box to a free area where we are going to work in. I'm dragging our hellhound in as a raster layer. Let's switch over to the layers tab, make sure our hellhound layer is selected and now I press Shift T because I want to flip the image. I just drag it over here. Now you can see our beast from the other side. I cut some parts out because our focus should be our hellhound and our character. Just make sure you don't cut off any important parts of the image. I hit apply and now we only work inside of this box. We don't need our control net layers anymore so I'm going to delete them. Now I'm selecting our succubus on the throne and drag her in. We need to switch the layer order so that our succubus gets in the front. We also need to resize the image so that it has a good proportion to our hellhound. What could lead to problems is that our beast and the wings of our character have a similar color pattern. So when we are in painting we have to look out that we don't merge these two together. A little more moving around here, so now that's good. And now I'm showing you a mind-blowing trick. So first let's hide our character. We are using the select tool again. I'm selecting our hellhound and as you can see we need much fewer points than with our succubus because the hellhound color is very different from the background. Maybe we can improve it slightly. Okay, nothing happened, but that's not a problem. Now instead of hitting apply we say save as and we click new regional guidance. This created a regional mask from our selection. Now we have a prompt just for this area and here I typed again hellhound angry which was the initial prompt. So we cancel this and now we bring our character back. You know what, let's make our character a little bit bigger here. Also, let's move her more over here so we have a better difference between Succubus and Hellhound. And now what we're going to do is we erase parts of the Hellhound mask. 
and we do this for the parts that overlap with our succubus because we want our character in the front and not the hellhound. This is a little time consuming but you want to do it right otherwise it will ruin your initial composition. I will fast forward this part, hear you soon. Hi friends, before I forget, I have a new guide on my Patreon where I show you on 60 plus pages how to get the most out of the new GPT-4 image model. Grab it now, it's free. Now we are going to draw an in-painting mask in every area where the background meets the foreground. Basically an outline around our succubus. I select the brush icon and make it a little bit bigger and now I trace all the lines. This way we get a nice unified image. I think I will fast forward this again. We need our prompt back from our succubus, so I make a right click, recall metadata and then select remix image. For our succubus we could also have used the regional guidance, but you know, let's try it out this way. I have to refit the bounding box here. I have a good feeling about this, I'm going to set the denoising strength to 0.4. We don't want the whole image and then I hit invoke. If you click the eye icon down here, you can see what it looked like before. And while it looks nice, I think we can do more. We can do better. The second one fits even better. So you know what, I'm going to save it to the gallery for now. Maybe we are going to use it, maybe not. I set the denoising strength to 0.5. I'm really excited for this render. Okay, it seems it gave our character a couple of extra arms, that's interesting. This here is not bad, but I don't like how the wings intersect with our hellhound. We are going to take it anyway and if the need arises then we will fix it later. For now our successful inpaint is on a different layer and we want to merge it with our character. So in order to do that we do a right click and we click merge down. Our hellhound and our character are still separated. That is because I want to fit our character even better. So again I do a select object and select our character here. And we save it as a new in-painting mask but we will have to refine it of course. This will not only make our image fit better, it will also improve on the details we already have. I will fast forward again. We are making the bounding box smaller, so this way we get more details in. Again we will render two images. Now you can see the lighting fits better and some details are improved. Also we have a better contrast, especially with this image here, so we are going to accept it. We don't need our inpainting masks anymore, so let's get rid of it to keep our canvas layers clean. It's time to improve on our character's face, so we make our bounding box much smaller here and we create a new in-painting mask. We paint a mask over her face and we're going to set the denoising strength to 0.35. Okay, for prompt we're going with high detailed, face of succubus, red glowing eye, intense stare, Smirk. And let's do another render here. Oh yeah, these two images look much more like succubus and I'm going to take this image here. This is beautiful. Now it's time to save our image out. I select the fit bounding box to layers but as you can see we have this wing here pointing out. So we have to set the bounding box by ourselves. 
If you hold down the control key while moving the bounding box around, you have a much more granular control. Zooming in or out can also help by fitting the bounding box manually. So as soon as you have the bounding box you want it, you do a right click and you say save to gallery and then bounding box to gallery. We are still far away from what we want to achieve, but we are on the right track in my opinion. So as our last action for today, drag in our image as a new raster layer and now we are going to work with this image from now on. In the next video we will utilize an IP adapter to use a reference image as our base for our background. I will also show you how you can inpaint from simple sketches and we will improve on a lot of details in our image. So I hope you learned a lot in this video and until then happy creating. Bye.